we're trying to treat this as just an everyday Saturday morning so that it's a little more authentic. So we did not plan. We're just, this is how we live our life. How's it growing? Today we're diving into the world of food forest, farm to table food prep, where Amanda Pike and her family will show you how to turn your garden harvest into delicious meals without spending all day in the kitchen. With everything that you have on your plate, you must have to be really good with your time management. Well, you can see we've done a lot already. Yeah. We made tea to go for our little dance party. We made a cake because we have a birthday party after that. You can see it didn't take that long. You were here about an hour. We made pie, coconut milk. The cream will set up on top. It's coconut meal in here so I can make cookies when I get back. We are drawing coconut. We got coconut apples. My son made ice cream and he made tea, soda tea. <laughs> and a delicious smoothie. Yeah, hubby made a smoothie. All that in an hour? Yeah, it was a little over an hour, but that was the big challenge. And that's typical for most people, right? Lack of time. What's really amazing is that the Pipe family had somewhere they had to be immediately after. So they demonstrated all that you can accomplish in a short amount of time. And we're gonna split this up within this two-part series. In today's episode, you'll learn how to make a fruit smoothie, ice cream, bread, banana pie, and pie topping. For those who wanna to jump to a particular food item, in the description of this video, you'll find chapter markers. And if you're not familiar with YouTube chapter markers, you'll see a convenient clickable time code index in the description below. Yeah, but you'll want to stick around through the video. Otherwise, you may miss the practical tips such as a very simple way to keep your bread from going stale and moldy. So where were we? Here we go. We're back to the Pike Food Forest. Entryway looks a little different. Look at this. We have a new driveway. We did not plan. We're just, this is how we live our life. I wake up groggy, <laughs> and so my husband's in charge of breakfast. And so this morning he just made our eggs from our chickens, and he used a variety of greens from our garden. And every morning almost he makes us a smoothie. So he's gonna make us our favorite smoothie, which has peppermint from the garden. And we found, do you wanna talk about the peppermint? This is just so much more potent than the sweet mint. And so you can really taste the peppermint. And then we have our bananas, and um, he freezes them this Yeah, way. We, we get our bananas from our yard, from our banana trees, and then we let them ripen a little bit. But, you know, they only ripen for so long. So we try to freeze them. And the freezing lets us, of course, make them lo last longer. But then it also adds a little bit of fun to the smoothie. Nice he, and icy. He freezes them side by side like this in a single row so that he can pop them off and they don't get stuck together. And this has been really helpful for us. So Wesley can make ice cream with these and he'll make ice cream in a minute. But this way, he does this with the mangoes too. He just freezes them side by side. Yes, I will make ice cream in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, freezing up side by side is never really good for us. And yep. so, do you want to make your little smoothie? Yeah, just love so. it. And it's something so easy that I think anybody can get started doing. This is the peppermint, kind of pop it in. Sometimes I'll actually, we'll pull the leaves off so that we can get cuttings from it and, uh, you know, repropagate it. Right now it's a little small, so I just take the tips off of it. Some nice peppermint. The fact that they're frozen, we don't have to freeze them for these smoothies, but it just makes it a lot more fun. I usually put enough just for the three of us. And some soy milk. Blow it up to the top. We also use our coconut milk from the yard and I'm gonna make that in a minute. But we do like just having high protein first thing in the morning as well, so. Yeah. He usually just covers the bananas just up to the top. Yeah, I do like a cup for each of us, like one cup's worth of each of us. I wanna give you a little, so I'll do a little more. A little more in there for all of us. And some um, regular cacao unsweetened cacao. It ends up being like a tablespoon or two. Yeah, I usually do about a tablespoon or two of it. 
Did you also grow cacao? Let's see how much we, we love We do it. have some cacao trees. Um, a couple of our friends who like to nurture their plants uh, are having more success. So ours, our food forest, sort of the wild, wild west. If it makes it awesome, if it doesn't, it's not meant for us. You know, we're we're just living our life and the plants have to do their part of this. They have to grow easily. So this Vitamix blender has been a lifesaver for us. You're gonna see I'm gonna use it for milk. I'm gonna use it to make sourdough starter. I mean, I'm gonna use it to make pie here in a minute. And I let it run for a while because it gets that air in there and it gets all the mint nice and chopped up and it's... But the peppermint is just so much better than just sweet mint. It's just more potent. You can see and it's it more really aggressive. In there with the you like aggressive plants. All right, my boy, you want your flying gorilla? Yeah, by the way, I was planning on sprinkling mint on top. Is okay. it garnish? A little garnish, thanks. Make it look good. Here you go, sir. Yeah, for Davis Dex. <laughs> it look good. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you, my love. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't give you two. Here, here, that's fine. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers, love. Cheers! Mostly. Cheers. You're helping David film today? Yep. Okay, do you want to show how to make your ice cream? So this little thing are, um, we have a friend and she's, I think she's about 90. She helped teach Wes to read. Her name is Irene. She's so wonderful. And she has this little Yonana machine. Make us ice cream using the bananas. So Wesley learned from her. basically gives it a very creamy consistency and it's very fun and then you can have little ice cream scoopers to give it the classic ice cream scoop shape but Wesley just loves it and he'll just eat it by the spoonful and it's just banana yeah. it's so much fun we tested out a number of different recipes with you know we have an, uh, an abundance of fruit so we like to make ice cream we love ice cream we tried it with uh, just regular coconut water we tried it with coconut cream from the yard mango and mango, of course. And you can do this with mango too, but mm. um, the the ice cream maker, you, it was very finicky. You had to get the, the frozen um, mixture just right. And it never quite replicated that that creaminess of ice cream. This did, this did the job. We, uh, this but really, like mango too. and it's just the fruit. It's just the frozen fruit. All it really does is it, it chops it up in a way that gives it that creaminess, particularly with the banana. So if you do mango or other fruit, we recommend that you put the banana with it because it gives it that creaminess. It's really nice. Nice. What is this called again? This is a... Uh... <laughs> Yo, Nana. Uh, and it, <laughs> like your Nana right. teaches you how to use it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Nana. Um, a lot of fun. And it's something that he can do. We like having him in the kitchen with us because, you know, children can be... Uh, resistant to new foods or even resistant to healthy foods if they're used to more processed things and when he's involved in the kitchen then he's excited to eat it so it's a lot of fun and then we'll just pop it in the freezer until we're ready to eat but this is super cute it's doing a good job <laughs> yeah. I think you have to put a little more in there all right <laughs> now go wash your hands handsome thank you for all your help and dedication james has been making a very classic sourdough loaf that he's about to show you and he's got this really great little bread slicer right there amanda you know opened our world to sourdough and being able to feed our starter um and we started you know we're starting with regular uh whole wheat from the whole wheat flour from the store and feeding it that way and we started with recipes of just water and the whole wheat and some coconut oil as like a little bit of fat in there with some salt to slowly let it rise. Mm -hmm. He's an upright maker. 
And um, then we started to say, okay, let's add some interesting things to it. So we started to grind the eggshells from the eggs that we were using anyway from the yard. Yeah, so a lot, of, calcium. a lot of women in the United States are calcium deficient. And that's a really huge problem because osteoporosis, there's no cure, only prevention. And a lot of the calcium supplements on the market are not actually readily absorbable. So they're used from shells and rock. And so we don't, we haven't evolved to eat that. Um, and so we don't actually absorb a great deal of the calcium in the supplements available. But a lot of researchers have looked into just egg shells. And so if you've seen the consumption of eggs in nature by like lizards and snakes, they eat the whole shell. And so it's a very normal thing to eat the shell with the egg. We're not used to it. It's not a human cultural thing at this time, not in the West, but people can just dry the egg shells we boil the egg first to make sure the shell is nice and clean of any debris, and then we dehydrate it and then grind it in the Vitamix blender. So the Vitamix blender is kind of a miller in addition. So we just stick it in there at high speed and blend it, no big deal, very easy. And uh, it makes a powder. And so yeah. then he puts it into the bread as a supplement. So it's a fortified bread. We also add moringa powder. Moringa powder, which we grow in the yard, of course, and has great benefits. He's been adding a beet powder to it as well because um, beet powder has up to 50% of your daily value of iron. So it's like a truly fortified bread. And, and uh, the beet powder gives it a nice little darker color and a little bit of sweetness too. So it's... it's uh... So he's been the loaf king and I've been like the crepe queen. So I'm doing the flatbread that's pretty much exclusively from the yard, um, from the sourdough starter. And then this one is supplemented from the yard and is primarily wheat. So it's just a nice sort of kind of scaling so you can see something that's very easy for children to do very easy to get started doing if you're already making sourdough and then he cuts it so nicely with this device here and it's just so crunchy and delicious the way that he stores it is in just um, a paper bag so we've experimented with like a ton of ways to store the bread in a way that wouldn't let it get like stale or you know get mold on it because of the humidity here in Florida and just straight up a paper bag. We were watching um, the <coughs> British cooking show. Wasn't that what it was? Yeah, I think it was the British cooking British baking show. Thank you, my love. And they were like, just store your bread in a paper bag. And we were like, seriously? <laughs> so simple, so too simple. simple. So simple. Oh. And so it doesn't get mold. It doesn't get stale. It's very good. We just keep it on the counter and- uh, Toast these up. Yeah, we'll toast them. We usually have a breakfast. So when we're together in the kitchen, we're usually kind of doing multi, like si simultaneous tasks together um, because we don't want to spend all day in the kitchen. We want to just fill the, fill the fridge for the day and, and be done. So I try to just make as much as possible overlapping steps. So I'm going to um, just show you a really quick little recipe. So these are just bananas from our yard. I have some that I already peeled in the fridge. And so I'm just going to pop them in the blender and uh, I'll pop off these little pins here. And then we have this compost. It's just a, a trash can that you can have a foot press. And that has been just really so essential. You know, when you're cooking, you don't want to dirty your hands by touching the compost bucket. And my husband jokes that we're a bit of a germaphobe around here, but we do try to like stay clean as we're doing things. So having just a foot press for the compost bucket is actually really, really helpful. So I'm gonna just put a couple in here. I'm gonna be making it into a pie dish. So I'm just gonna fill it um, by eye. I, I measure a lot of things, but when we're doing multiple things at one time, we often just don't. And when you're working with banana, it's just such a forgiving <laughs> ingredient. It's more of a ratio than, than anything. And so I, I want to have one egg per banana. These eggs, so I'm gonna estimate that I've got about three or four of the normal Chiquita large bananas in here, because these are much smaller. They're skinnier, they're, they're shorter. So let's say that two or three or one banana. So I've got maybe like, I'll put six eggs in. And I'm gonna rinse the eggs off because they came right from the garden and make sure they don't have any debris on them before I crack them. And the only time that we make 
egg powder out of them is when we are um, have to boil them. And then just composting all the kitchen scraps is just so important for just making sure that our soil stays healthy. There's so much research that shows that our soils are just completely depleted of nutrients. Without having nutrients in the soil, your food doesn't have nutrients. And so by composting every week, we're making sure that our soil is very rich in nutrients. So the calcium, the shell is gonna add calcium to the soil, which is really important for the plant giving back the calcium to you. So with most Americans being deficient in calcium, it's nice to know that we're feeding our soil just that. So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt after this gets started, but I'm gonna go ahead and let it whip up. very simple batter. So the banana is kind of a, is a starch, it's a sweetener. You don't have to add any fat because it has that creamy texture. I'm just going to throw in a little bit of ground uh, vanilla in here. We'll make it a vanilla pie. You can make it any kind of pie you want. We have a bunch of veggie powders in the freezer. So we have blue butterfly pea veggie powder. We've got um, dragon fruit veggie powder. And so sometimes I'll just mix in a variety and make it like a rainbow. But it's all the same. You take the batter and you can just add different, either people will use food coloring, but it doesn't add any nutrition. And of course, colorants aren't necessarily good for your health. So if you add veggie powder, it really doesn't carry a strong taste and you get the coloring. But I'm just gonna add some, some ground vanilla bean, and then I'm going to add just a little bit of salt and that's it. I'm gonna microwave it, which is the equivalent of steaming for about six minutes until it's firm in the center. And then it's basically like a little custard pie. And it's very delicious. So, and then you can garnish it in a variety of ways. So, I'm just gonna add a pinch. So sometimes we use um, like measuring spoons and things like that, but then we have to wash all those spoons. And so we're kind of doing this in a way that's more classic to cultures who cook all the time, which is eyeballing it, <laughs> because then there's not this huge cleanup. It's, it maybe it's not the exact same every time, but it's delicious enough. <laughs> you know? You're like, okay, I like it. So I'm just gonna add some vanilla bean there. That was probably like a, maybe like a quarter teaspoon, no big deal. I'm gonna just throw in like a pinch of salt, just a teeny tiny little bit, you know, just like a little bit of salt into my hand, just so that it has just a little bit of salt. And that's it, I'm gonna whip it up one more time and then pour it into a pie dish and microwave it. All right, so because, um, because we're gonna steam it in the microwave, it's not gonna be too sticky but I'm just gonna coat the pie dish with a little bit of coconut oil. So I just stick the silicone brush in it and just I'll just paint a kind of a thin layer here just so that it doesn't stick, nothing too fancy. And then we'll pour it in and then we'll just put it on the microwave and I'll show you how to make coconut milk and I'll talk about flatbread. Go from there. This is just a very basic batter. It's like a custard, so it'll be kind of like a, a custard pie. And then that's it, I'm gonna stick it in the microwave. This is larger than my other one, so we'll start with six minutes and 30 seconds and then we'll check on it. So my husband's been making the loaves and they're delicious and they're fortified with the calcium as we mentioned with the iron, uh, with the moringa. So we feel really good that we're getting just bulk of nutrition. But I'm also very interested in just making the bread entirely from the garden. And so this is an idea that is kind of foreign to a lot of people. The Roman loaf was not the cornerstone of civilization. The flatbread was the cornerstone of civilization. So anybody can make a flatbread, and anybody can make a flatbread from the garden. So I'm going to show you how. 
So here are just some crepes that we made from the garden. And these are from using green banana, okay? So just like I made a batter for the pie using ripe banana, you can do the exact same thing using unripe banana. So here are some unripe banana that I simply cut the ends off, made a slit in the peel, and I boiled them for about 15 minutes to remove the tannins. So a lot of fruit have protective anti-nutrients that will discourage them from being eaten before they're ripe. So with green banana, they have tannins. So that's what gives, if you eat an unripe banana, it gives you that dry mouth sensation. Um, that is tannin. It's astringent. So you just boil it off and then the peel just comes right off, no big deal. And now what you have is a potato. That's it. The peel is edible and it is nutritious. And so people will take either ripe banana peels or unripe banana peels and they'll do things like make banana peel bacon. Like they'll marinate it and then just like fry it up as bacon. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun, high in fiber. We don't do that, we compost them. Maybe sometime we'll experiment with that. But once you have a pure starch, then by adding a protein like an egg, you can make a bread, which is how we got these flat breads. Very, very simple. So there are other things in the garden as well that can create a bread. And so here are some different ingredients that can create a bread yard. So these were all collected yesterday. When I collect things, Harvesting is a different activity from, from assembling. So harvesting is considered prepping. So you go out there, you get the thing. Yesterday, my husband got the rack. That's one step. Then I went out there, I cut the bananas off, I put them into the pot, that's another step. So prepping and assembling are the only two steps really involved in making any recipe. So you wanna chunk it up so it doesn't get overwhelming. And so these, yesterday, I just went out to the garden and I collected these. These are Malabar chestnuts, okay? And so they are a protein carb balance. They also have a significant amount of fat. So they make a delicious bread. So you should soak all your nuts and all of your seeds to help leach out some of the anti-nutrients like we talked about tannins, but also lectins and phytic acid and things like this. So I'm gonna stick my hand in and just show you some of the things that we're soaking here. And in Ezekiel, if you are familiar with like Judaism and Christianity and Islam, they all sort of like share the Ezekiel history. And so the Ezekiel history has one of the oldest recipes that is still referenced today, right? We know Ezekiel bread. Yeah. And it has all the seeds in it. The thing is, is the point of that recipe was forage and then put them in one vessel. And that is a sourdough recipe. So you don't need wheat to have sourdough. 60% of the entire human race's diet is just three plants, wheat, rice, and corn. So once you find a way to substitute or replace wheat, now you can be self-sufficient up to like 60% or more, right? So if 60% of the human race's diet is just wheat and you find a substitute for that, well, now you've just found a substitute for 60% of your diet. So this might seem a little counterintuitive, but when you go to the grocery store and you buy crackers, or you buy pasta, or you buy bread, or you buy a pastry, it's all wheat. So these are substitutes. So we've got a beans, nuts, and seeds can be ground and fed to a sourdough starter. And then we, Ezekiel, it's referencing that. Take your lentils, take your barley, right? Mix them together, put them in the, in the starter. So this is just a Florida speckled butter bean. And then we've got pigeon peas, which everybody knows. And then I have the Malabar chestnut and you don't have to shell these. Um, and then I also have in here winged bean. And I'm gonna let them soak for you know a good 12 to 24 hours. Let them get nice and soft. And then I'll rinse them off. You wanna rinse off the phytic acid and uh, you pop them in the blender with equal parts water and feed them to your starter, that's it. And then when you make a flatbread, you, you just take, for every one cup of starter, you add one egg. And it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you saw how imperfect that pie was. It was like, go ahead and put six eggs in there. Um, and then you can throw, you know, a little bit of oil if you want it to be fattier, but things like Malabar chestnut. And the winged beans are very fatty. 
And if you have coconut in there, it's very fatty as well, so you don't necessarily have to add any oil. They're healthy fats. Extremely healthy fats. Inca peanut, it has 17 times the amount of omega-3s as like a sockeye salmon. These are just Inca peanuts that I uh, roasted. So I was gonna add them to my starter, but then I was reading these different peer-reviewed journals and it was all suggesting roasting. And if you roast something, then you develop this like carbon exterior from, from from the roasting process, and the yeast don't like that. They're like, ooh. <laughs> but it's very yummy. Would you like to try an Inca peanut? Sure. So but it's very, very yummy, very delicious. Mmm. So you can add this to the sourdough separate, because the yeast aren't gonna like the, the little singed exterior. I'm tasting something familiar that's, besides peanuts, something else too, I can't. Oh. They say it's a cross between, um, a chickpea and a peanut and then some people are like it almost has like I, they can taste that omega-3 back to that cake it's a pie pie cake the dessert next you're gonna see how amanda makes icing for the cake but wait are we gonna see amanda feed her sourdough starter from the garden yes but that'll be in the next episode of this series let's get back to the cake bye are you done Done. So I'm just gonna take off the, the rim here, put uh, an icing on it. So I'll just make an icing that's very simple. So it's just kind of like a basic vanilla pie. And so I'm gonna just add these bananas. I'm gonna just throw some beet powder in it or any kind of color. You can add blue butterfly pea. Wes, you see yeah. Do you want blue or do you want red icing? Oh. oh. Just one, choose one. Um, blue. So we use this all the time. It's just a, it's an interesting colorant. So it's not an artificial dye, it's a food-based colorant. This is blue spirulina. There's a lot of research about the health benefits as opposed to health problems of other colorants. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit in, it's pretty potent. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in here. I am, I'm gonna whip this and see if I need to add any moisture. Um, I might, we'll see. This is a little bit, a little bit wet for me. So you can add a little bit more starch. I could just throw a regular uh, banana in here to make it thicker for an icing. I'm tempted, I think I'm just gonna let it set up in the fridge for a minute, cause then it's still super sweet. So, and then I'll just pipe it. And I'm gonna lay my piping bag in the fridge. And so in the fridge, starches will swell. So it'll thicken up in the fridge. See if the icing has solidified. I'm saying icing. <laughs> banana. Blue spirulina, but we're calling it icing because it's delicious and fun. It's a little bit damp, so I'll just I'll have to just smooth it on for the sake of our time. So I'm just gonna gently smooth it on because usually if it sets up a little thicker and you can see it's starting to set up thick, then you can pipe it. Like you can legit make like little like flower designs. But um, we're we're running out of time, so I'm just gonna smear like an easy layer because it's gonna be pretty liquid. And then I'll just save the rest for when it sets up. I'll just put this on top and then I'll put it in the fridge so that it'll create like a, you know, like a typical icing layer. And then I'll save the rest for when it sets up, I'll make cupcakes or something. So I'm just gonna like, just bring it to the edges. And it's sweet, it just tastes like banana. And then I'll um, let it set up and it'll get firm and then it'll slice nice and clean.
Stack, remember, Amanda has recipes in her book as well. Yes, Amanda has recipes for 200 of the plants that she covers in her book, Transforming Florida Yards, a Regional Food Forest Guide. This is a valuable resource if you have or want to start a food forest, especially if you live in Florida or a similar climate. If you're interested in purchasing Amanda's book, you'll find the affiliate link in the video description below. And when you make a purchase through this link, you're not only supporting the mission of Stack Serpent Harvest, but you're also helping us continue to make awesome video content like this in the future at no extra cost to you. And your support is greatly appreciated. Hey Stack, rumor has it Amanda might be writing a cookbook as well. Well, she submitted a Food Force cookbook proposal, so if all goes well, once it's published, I'll have a link for that in the description as well. That blender they have is sure a workhorse. It sure is. That Vitamix model has been discontinued, unfortunately. Yeah, but those are a bit pricey, Stack. 400 bucks? Sometimes you can find that or a similar model that's been refurbished at a much cheaper price, like the Pikes did. I have a Ninja Blender food processor combo that I've really been happy with. And in the description below, I'll have affiliate links for those as well as Amanda's book and potential cookbook once it's available. You ready, Bob? Yes, but first we want to give a quick shout out to our friend OT Gardner on Facebook who let us use this photo of her kitchen sign for the thumbnail. Live regeneratively and let's grow together.